Timestamps are below for you to jump to a game. Ali Reza Faruja versus Shaq Mehmed Yarov. I'm going to focus on this match. This is from the New in Chess tournament. Faruja is the top junior player in the world. Mehmed Yarov is Azerbaijan number one. In the New in Chess quarterfinals, it's the best of four for day one and best of four games also in day two. Let's check it out. At the end of the video, I'm going to go through the final standings to show you who made it to the semi-finals. In this video, I'm going to go through all the victories. Let's check it out. Timestamps are below for you to jump to a game. If it's your first time here, hello, my name is William, let's begin. D4, D5, C4, C6, the Slav, Knight F3, Knight F6, Knight C3 and A6, we have the Chebonenko Slav. The idea with this move is so then black can expand quickly with B5. White can play a few moves here. I've played e3 here before. White can play b3. Get the bishop out to f4 or to g5. For example, I have played this move before and after b5, b3. So then you have pawn and the bishop defending it. After a6, queen c2 was played. Aiming for e4. b5, b3, keeping the tension. g6 and now e3 instead of e4. E4 was possible, but black may try this. Take, take. So then the B file opens up, and then Ferruja might have taken in the center. Take, take, take. Bishop G7, and we've got a few options for black. He's going to castle quickly. He is going to put the bishop on F5 to attack the queen. And then later he's going to time it. Play C5. So then this bishop is very strong on this diagonal. For example, let's just play a few more moves. Bishop e2, castle, castle, bishop f5, and if queen e3, c5, using the power of the two bishops. I think black has a pretty good game here. So maybe this is what white was afraid of. So instead of going for e4, he went e3. Bishop f5, attack the queen, bishop d3, offer a trade, e6. Black chooses to put all his pawns on light squares. Castle, bishop b4, a natural move maybe to trade, and then go bishop g7. I quite like that option. Get rid of this bishop, it's not a great piece. Then bishop g7, castle, knight d7, play from here. Bishop b4 played, bishop d2, Ferruja deliberately trades bishop for knight, take, take. The problem is if this bishop goes to this diagonal, then black cannot castle. Knight d7, knight e5 first, take, take. With this pawn capture, white now controls another dark square. The bishops now come off, knight e4, and bishop in the center. Not bishop b4, because c5. When the bishop moves, then black can castle. So he chooses to put the bishop on b4. White now has another plan to trap the knight. Pawn captures in the center first, and queen a5. Because if you go f3 now, the knight can actually go to c5. That's why black played queen c5. And after this, the knight has found a way to escape. It may even come back to d7. After queen a5, white opens up the file. Now he kicks the knight away, and it goes to g5 this time. The option is to sit on e6, but white now plays rook c1. This is an excellent move. Instead of playing a really cool looking move, which is e6, just opening up the bishop, but black might castle and after take, take. White is much better here, but I think Mamed Yara played a really good move with rook c1. It's always good to play a move with two functions. The point of rook c1, you attack the pawn on c6, but also you plan to go bishop c5. Rook c1, castle. Because if black defends the pawn, then bishop c5 and black is in big trouble. Bishop parks itself on this perfect spot. Black's king is going to remain in the center. Castle played. Black gives up a pawn. Knight e6. Bishop c3, attack the queen. Queen b5, offering a trade giving black the chance to open up the a-file. White takes this chance, but now he plays a3, giving himself a spot to part the bishop. 
rook c8, the pair of rooks come off, and bishop b4. If we look at the king side, white has 5 against 4. Rook d1 is also possible to target the d5 pawn. d4 played. Black gets rid of his weakness. Take, take. Rook d1, attack the knight. Rook c4, defending from the side. King f2, g5, getting space, stopping white playing f4. Rook d3, rook c2, check. Rook c4, king back. King into the middle. Knight attacks pawn and bishop. Rook d2 offering a trade. Rook c4. Black says no. Bishop d6. You park it right in the middle. Rook a4. Rook b2. This bishop is perfect. Defending a3 and e5. This rook now goes pawn hunting. Knight a5. No good way to defend this pawn. Knight a5 played. Rook b5. Knight c4. Check. King moves and knight a3. This bishop is perfect. Knight takes a3. No way in this position do you play bishop takes knight, even though you are a pawn up. Rook endings are known for being drawn, even when you are a pawn up or a pawn down. So no way get rid of this perfect bishop. After knight takes a3, throw in a check and king c3. After knight c4, king b3, we have a double attack. No good way to defend both. Now white is totally winning. Grab the bishop, grab the rook. Rook b5, defend your pawn, get your pawns moving. King gets closer, closer. Rook b6, h4, cool move, can't take because of the knight. So h4, really cool. Knight g2, you could play h5. Pair of pawns come off. Rook d2, attack the knight. King in, attack this pawn. Knight here defending the pawn. And rook d2, planning to come in. When you are winning in this kind of position, just play rook d6, find a way to trade knights, and then you will get a one pawn endgame. This is over. King here, let's say. He resigned after this. Take, take, and then here. Mabid Yarov takes the lead. The next two games were drawn, so it is 2-1. Remember, this is day one. Feruja now has to win his final game to tie the match. Feruja has white, Mabid Yarov has black, d4, knight, f6. c4, e6, knight, f3, d5, knight, c3, c5. We have the semi tarashk We have this situation in the center where black... He's just trying to swap off a pair of pawns, gets pieces off. He only needs a draw, so this is a cool opening to play if you want to try and swap a lot of things off. Take, take, and e3. White keeps his pawn chain in the center. Knight, bishop come out. A pawn trade happens, and both sides castle. In this kind of position, this is a normal way to play in the middle game. You put a piece in front of your opponent's pawn. This is an isolated pawn, it cannot be defended by another pawn. Rook e1, you get the open file. Bishop f6 targeting the center. Bishop e4 now, bishop and knight target this pawn. But it's okay for black at the moment. He's got pawn and queen defending it. h6 to control this square, but it now gives white an option to occupy this diagonal. This diagonal has been weakened, so Feruja brings his bishop all the way back. White now wants to go queen here or here to come into h7. Knight e7, queen d3, knight g6. Blocking the diagonal, bishop e3, defend the center, b6. This bishop has two options, b7 or a6. Queen e4, attack the knight, bishop b7, defend, and this knight can move out the way in the future. Queen g4, facing the king, knight e7. A few ideas with this move. The knight can come to f5 or d5. The bishop is now in the game and the rook can come to c8 to occupy the file. Bishop c2, rook c8, rook d1, rook in the middle. Bishop takes f3. This is a gigantic decision to just give away a bishop for a knight. I mean, this bishop looks so strong. But what is white's idea? Well, if you don't give up this knight, then maybe this knight will actually hop in. So if black played a nothing move, then e knight e5. Now we're using the power of the rook on the d-file, so it's a huge decision to give up such a great piece. Bishop takes knight, take, and knight d5. Now it is black's turn to put some pressure on his file. Knight d5, threatening, knight takes knight. This rook is very well placed on the c-file. Bishop retreats all the way back to c1, so then queen defends knight. Knight takes knight, pawn takes, and queen d5 offering. 
A further trade, remember black only needs a draw, but queen d5 is a good move anyway, offering a trade and attacking that pawn. White says no. You grab the pawn and bishop takes h6, a really cool tactic because you cannot take this pawn because after queen f6, white is just totally crashing through. After this, knight h4 played to attack the queen, queen g4, so then pinning the pawn to the king, knight back to f5. You can't play this, take, take. Well, you can, but maybe rook c3 and the game goes on. Knight f5 played, bishop retreats, g6 holding your knight, g3. Knight d6 attack the bishop, bishop comes back, couple of bishops very well placed. Queen comes back because it's gone pawn grabbing. Bring it back into the center, h4, h5. Time to break open black structure. Bishop g7. Queen defends this square anyway. Rook e2, e5. Striking in the center, making sure this bishop comes in the game. Bishop back to b1. One option was actually bishop a6. A really cool move pointed out by the engine. The point of this move is really, I mean, it attacks the rook, but it's to stop this pawn advancing. You attack the rook. Let's say you go rook d8. D takes e5, just like that, opening the file for the rook. If bishop takes e5, then c4. Attacking the queen. So after queen d4, really cool sequence coming up. If queen d4, offering a queen trade, take take and bishop g5 all of a sudden white is taking over bishop g5 you attack the rook and rook attacks bishop so this was a really cool option with bishop a6 rather than what white played which was to tuck the bishop back to b1 taking the center and white loses this center pawn but it's based on a tactic unfortunately today it doesn't work out for white Bishop h6 played, you attack the rook, but rook attacks bishop along. Well, with the knight on the d-file, is black in trouble? No, because Shaq has actually seen further. Black can actually play bishop g7, and this is the problem. By retreating the bishop, offering a trade, white is in big trouble. He cannot take the knight because he has rook c1 check picking it up. After this, take, take. If rook d6, then check. And you are two pawns up. You got two runners here. Perhaps this is what Ferruja missed after bishop h6, bishop g7. Take, take. Bishop takes g6. Call to throw in this in between move. Because if you play the normal move, then rook d6, at least you've got a pawn back. But after bishop g6, just because I take you doesn't mean I have to take you back. And also, knights are very tricky pieces anyway. Knight to b5. Black is taking over. The point of this move is that you're going to go knight c3, attacking both rooks. At the same time, this bishop is being attacked. Bishop attacks the rook, but the problem is rook attacks the bishop. Black is taking over. g4, you defend the bishop. Knight c3, going to pick up a rook. Take, take. Very clean. Now you are off. You could just get your pawns rolling, which is what I would do. But he just gets rid of this bishop, because after take... You got these pawns which are going nowhere, but these pawns are just running home. Rook h8, attack the pawn. Rook d4, you defend, but you can just push. And now, rooks belong behind pass pawns for the attacker. This is it. Check, king up, and game over. Just one more trick. You don't want to take because check actually picks up the pawn. So you go king g6 and game over. There's no good way to stop him. Rook a4, just temporarily stopping it. Push, push, that's it. You can't stop two runners. Therefore, Shaq has won day one, 3-1. Ferruja has to win the match tomorrow. Ferruja has white, Mavid Yarov has black. D4, D5, and we have the London system, but it's a copycat. Both players put their bishops here. C4, white strikes straight away because up to a point, black cannot copy white anymore. C4. Black now defends in the center. Early queen now attacks the pawn on b7. Normally this bishop is here defending it. But I guess it's just a different line. Black now plays in a very active way. D takes c4 played. Queen takes b7. You attack the rook. Bishop e4. This is a really cool way to defend the rook. X-ray defense. Queen takes c7. 
So what has white achieved? Well, he's bagged a pawn. Queen takes pawn, take, take. Notice at the moment, black has two pieces out. Bishop b4 check, knight blocks with knight d2. Three pieces out, but the bishop on c7 is actually a target. Knight d7 played, e3, and now rook c8. So even though black has a pawn down, he's gonna get a lot of time because he's gonna attack this bishop. Bishop back to g3, bishop d5. Great retreating move because even though this bishop looks amazing, it's time to vacate the square so then black can put his knight on e4, putting pressure. a3, kick the bishop away, bishop back, keep the pressure. Keep the pin, keep the pressure. Rook c1 played, king e7. It's the end game now, keep the king in the middle. Another option was to castle. King e7 played, and king d1. Just getting out the way. If bishop e2, knight e4, then it looks like he can't really castle. So Ferruja just gets out the way with king d1. By the way, there is this ridiculous move, king e2. Pointed out by the engine, and it just looks so silly. But I'm going to try and explain this move. Okay, knight b6. This is what happened in the game. So I'm going to play exactly the same moves as what Mavidyara played in the game, but there's going to be a difference. Bishop out to h4, pinning the knight to the king. And really, this is the point of king e2. Now you can go e4, e5, and create some play. Knight a4, attacking this. e4, attacking the bishop. The bishop moves. No, the bishop doesn't have to move. You can go c3, attacking this knight. b4, now you attack this, and it's just so crazy. If we consider this position, that knight is being attacked, that bishop's being attacked. So if you take that one... You can swap off rooks first and then take this. And in this position, yeah, it's just a total mess, but maybe white can actually get out. This bishop is now under attack, so if you move it, now you can go king d2. The smoke is clearing, but in white's favor. Take, and this bishop can actually come out to a6. And you attack the rook, rook e1 check, and white actually has a great position. He's going to threaten to double pawns. Also, this bishop can come back to attack the knight. So this was one option. Now, if we look at the game, king d1 looks okay, because you're just getting out of the way. Knight b6, we're going to play exactly the same moves. The knight comes in the middle. Bishop h4 is still possible with this idea, e4, e5. It doesn't actually work out. If we go back here, knight b6, knight e5, knight a4, and this is the problem. He's going to take on b2 with check. He's going to buy some time with this check. If we go here, bishop h4, uh, knight e4, you can't go e4. Because knight b2 check. That's it. And after king c2, c3. That's it. You are going to open up the c file in your favor. If you move the knight, that is actually checkmate. King cannot move anywhere. So that's the difference. If the king was here, then there's no pressure from the rook. So I hope I've explained this idea well enough. I mean, when I was looking through the stockface, I just didn't understand it at all. But this is the reason. King should not be on the c-file. White is in big trouble. After king d1, knight b6, knight in the middle, knight a4, threatening check, rook c2. This is the problem. White defends b2, yet black still takes it. Chess is unfair. Chess is tough. You defend a pawn and the guy still takes it. You know something's gone wrong. Knight takes b2, check. Takes c3. Attacking both. There is no check here because you got your bishop. So rook b4, blocking the path, but you just take the knight. The f3, controlling this, trying to go e4, but rook c1, check. King d2, rook a1 gonna take this then take this so king gets out of the way you grab the rook rook c8 check and after the king moves rook c1 white had enough a total demolition after rook c1 this bishop is gonna drop and black is going to be up too much material take 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 if we take stock well black is a rook up game over the next game was actually a draw so it's one and a half half now we go to the final game Ferruja has white, Mabid Yarrow has black. We have c4, knight f6, knight f3 this time, and striking in the center, bishop b2 and c5. Couple of pawns, very similar setup to what Mabid Yarrow did before. And after g3, so we got this double fianchetto system. This is a great way to play because if you want to win, you want to keep as many pieces on the board as possible. 
So by putting your bishops on these squares, you give yourself that chance. Mabidiarov takes him to send and goes b6. Now we compete with each other on the diagonal. We got a couple of bishops there. Bishop e7, a3, stopping any knight coming in to b4. So a3 is a useful move. Queen c7, knight c3, knight c6. At the moment, you can see it's move 10, and neither side has committed castling. You're just waiting for your opponent to commit, and maybe you go the same way as well. I'm guessing this might happen if white castled, queenside black would also follow suit. Kingside, kingside. Black only needs a draw, so yeah, cool way to play. Knight b5, you attack the queen. Queen goes to d7, e3, controlling the center. Also, you want to go d4. Castle, d3 now instead. Maybe he wants to go king e2. One option was to go d4 or you castle first, but d3 instead, controlling lots of squares in the center. Rook d8, putting pressure on this pawn. Maybe that's why d3 wasn't the best move, but rook d1, Ferruja supports it with his queen and rook as well. a6, you attack the knight. Knight goes back to c3 and b5, even though white has two on it, black still goes b5. You know something's gone wrong. If this opportunity is possible for your opponent. B5, he still strikes, and white now says, right, enough, I have to get my king out of the center. You cannot take, because after take, even though you've bagged a pawn, this is such a cool move. This bishop is so strong on this diagonal. Knight moves away, rook b8, you can even take, actually. The queen moves, and then c4, you cement your incredible bishop in the center, and you've got a very strong position. Castle played, b4, attacking knight and pawn, knight a4, coming in, threatening a fork on the queen and rook, rook b8, get out of the way, h3, just a normal move, get some space, also stop knight g4, bishop retreats back to a8, so then the rook is now useful on the b file, rook d2, planning to double rooks, swap off and knight b4, so black, I think has played a great game so far, it's move 20 now, with this knight move, you attack queen and pawn but at the same time you get this bishop in the game and this rook is in the game as well because it defends the knight along with the pawn black has played a great game this knight is so dangerous Ferruja decides to get rid of it take take now b3 is a threat so queen b3 played the queen as a blockader is not the best use for such a powerful piece ideally you would want a pawn or a knight queen c7 Planning to come c5, putting pressure here. d4, a lot of control with the two pawns, but with every pawn push, it is a weakness. Knight e4 now comes in, you attack the rook, and you might come in on c3. Rook a2, bishop c6, you attack the knight. Rook a2, doubling up. Ferruja is getting play on the a file. Bishop f6, good move, stopping white, putting his knight in the middle, also putting pressure here, maybe e5 in the future. Knight b2, knight gets out of the way now. We see the point of Ferruja doubling rooks. We're going to attack that pawn. But Abed Yarov has set up a tactic. Bishop f6, I know I said e5, that is not the point of it. Black now crashes through in style with knight takes g3, just blowing open the position. Maybe white should have played king h2. Well, actually, he can't because knight f2. So, yeah, knight takes g3, crashing through. Knight d3 was played. You can't take because bishop takes f3. First you capture this knight. After capture, then check. You attack king and bishop. Bishop highs and bishop d4. That's the point. You cannot recapture because your queen is hanging. If You cannot defend this pawn because your rook is hanging. And you cannot go knight d1 because you just grabbed the rook. And after this, well, this is the weak spot. You got your queen in the action, throw the rook into d2. There's no good way to stop. Queen takes g2, checkmate. Knight d3 was played. Knight comes back to f5. It's grabbed a pawn time to bring it back. Rook a6. So Ferruja has bagged the a pawn, but bishop takes f3. Notice this is the second time in this match where Mamed Yarov has deliberately given up the bishop for that knight on f3. Based on a tactic, after he takes back, bishop takes d4 quick. Crashing through in style. Bishop takes d4, attacking the rook. 
if you take back, which happened. Knight takes d4, you attack queen and bishop. Also, queen attacks pawn. Rook is very powerful on the d file. Queen has to go back to d1 to defend the bishop. Queen c4, you attack knight and you attack this. So, queen d1 played, queen takes c4, knight e5, you attack the queen. Queen goes to c3, keeping an eye on everything. Bishop, rook in the corner and also the knight. Bishop h5, you attack the weak point, but g6, you just kick the bishop away and black's got a few nasty discoveries with this knight. Rook a7, you attack this, but knight c6, that is the nasty d discovery. Ivan Chuk once said the hardest move to see is a backward knight move, but in this position, I don't think it's that hard. You retreat the knight, so then the rook attacks the queen and the knight attacks both. You attack the rook and the guy's knight. Black is taking over. Black is totally winning. Knight d7, he blocks that way. You grab the rook. Knight, bishop for the rook, but this is just game over. There's no coordination among all the white pieces. Rook a8 is a really clean way to just get rooks off. If you refuse to trade, rook a1 just wins the queen. Another way to win, you could just push the pawn. Another way to win is actually... You can actually take the bishop because the queen guards this square. There's no check from white, but no need to mess about. No need to give white a chance. You can go b3, but rook a8 is so clean. After take, take, yeah, game over. Feruja resigns, so he is out of the tournament. Mami Yarov is through. Carlsen versus Rajabov. It was 2-2 on day one. Then Carlsen won one game and three draws. He is through to the semi-finals. Levon Aronian versus Wesley So. Aronian won 3-1 on day one, and then he also won on day two, so he is through. This is the first semi-final. Carlsen versus Aronian. Nakamura beat Le Kuang Liam. Two and a half, one and a half, and then he beat him again on day two. So that is the second semi-final. Mamed Yarov versus Nakamura. Here is YouTube's suggestion for what to watch next. But if you don't like their suggestion, you might enjoy my one. Alireza Faruja beats Magnus Carlsen in 29 seconds.